So I saw Spike Lee's Black Klansman last night, and I've had about a night to really process my thoughts on the whole thing. And I've come to the conclusion that at 61 years of age, Spike Lee just made one of the most important films of the 21st century. Can you do that? With the right white man, we can do anything. Black Klansman is Spike Lee at his absolute best, and I think that is pretty damn good when you consider his track record. I was first introduced to Lee in high school when we had to study Do the Right Thing for English, and I was just sort of captivated by his gritty, really sort of in-your-face and somewhat over-the-top style. I was so impressed with him that I went back and watched like Malcolm X and whatever. Eventually, I saw Chirac, which I thought was a really interesting and unique movie that nowhere near enough people saw. I was very, very impressed with that. Cut to 2018 and we're here with Black Klansman, which is the perfect example of fantastic material and a brilliant director and these two merging into this cohesive and really perfect little product. One thing that really impressed me about Black Klansman was the way the film can be super funny. Like there are some bits in this movie that, you know, I would argue one of the funnier or some of the funniest sequences in, of the entire year. And two minutes later, the film shows one of the most heartbreaking sequences of the entire year. Like the way Lee just has full control of the tone and knows, you know, you can't go too far on one side without, you know, going that far on the other. And yeah, it's that perfect balance that he really, really, really nails with this film. Since you asked, I hate blacks. I hate Jews, Mexicans and Irish, Italians and Chinese. But my mouth to God's ears, I really hate those black rats. So obviously the main story of this film is about Ron Stallworth, a black man who was able to trick the KKK into thinking he was a white person by having another white cop play him in real life while he used his voice over the phone. And yeah, when you consider the true story, this movie is legitimately insane. Like how this happened is a testament to how stupid the Ku Klux Klan and their members actually are. Uh, this is a movie that does not portray them in a positive light at all. And that is exactly what they deserve. They don't deserve uh, complex character arcs or deep backstories. They deserve to be portrayed in a manner in which they are. Whether it is the introduction shot to David Duke, perfectly played by Topher Grace, by the way. He did a magnificent job with that role because a lot of actors um, would have played that role and they would have played it. Uh, they would have done something a bit over the top, a bit more, you know, larger than life and that wasn't really what Topher Grace did and I'm very happy he didn't because the role feels very very real in a horrifying sense. David Duke is introduced to the film and in this shot he he fumbles a phone and he, he nearly drops it basically. He does drop it actually. He drops the phone onto his desk and it was then that I knew oh okay so this is this is the KKK in this film. America first. America first. Sorry, I just had to put a jacket on and I didn't realize how cold it was in here. Earlier in the film, there's a scene between uh, Ron Stallworth, played by John David Washington, and another police officer in which David Duke is first mentioned. Um, basically, the officer tells Stallworth that Duke is giving racism a new face. Uh, it's sort of, you know, the old ways of the KKK, you know, the violent beatings and you know whatnot and violence in general is gone and you know here is a new a new face and uh you know david duke wears three-piece suits he's never seen wearing the hood in public and he has this really sort of egotistical vibe to him i was watching an interview between the real ron stallworth and he said how you know he enjoyed talking to david duke on the phone at times because you understood, you know, why he was able to to convince people, you know, about the KKK because he 
he had he was a nice person until you brought up race and that was when he changed completely and you saw this monster and i i found that really interesting how the film sort of does that as well i'm paraphrasing here but there's another line in this same scene where the officer basically uh, says how you know david duke is sort of targeting a higher position you know he doesn't want racist he doesn't want to be known as the racist kkk guy he wants to be respected and he wants a higher position something like the oval office and uh ron stallworth sort of says are you stupid paraphrasing like you know america is not going to vote someone like this in office you know and you know spike lee is really trying to attack the audience there he wants you to piece together he's he's really winking at you saying look there is a political figure right now who is very egotistical who is very racist who you know and he's hoping the audience gets it i think they get it i'm pretty sure they get it and it's it's marvelous it's it's really really harrowing but brilliant now, I don't really want to spoil the final sequence of the film, so if you don't want to know it, please go away. Go off of this video. Thank you for watching so far, but go away. Probably the best 10 minutes I've seen in a very, very long time. But the final scene cuts to Stallworth's apartment, and the character hears a knock on the door. He gets up, he opens the door, and there's this beautiful dolly zoom as he's sort of, you know, it looks like he's moving. You know what a dolly zoom is, but it's beautiful. And um, the dolly zoom also cuts to the, the window. And from the window, we see this burning cross in the distance. We see a cross burning and it is so powerful. It's so sad because what Lee is trying to say here is that despite what Stallworth achieved, this shit is real. Instead of cutting like any other director would, instead of just cutting to black like any other director would, Lee goes even further. He cuts to August 11, 2017, which unless you lived under a rock, you'd know what that was. In this sequence, we see documentary style footage which showcases the rebirth or the mainstream rebirth of neo-Nazis and the KKK. We see people waving these fucking flags around, you know, like, like they're proud and they are proud and it's so just terrifying to see. It's, it's shocking, it, you know, it, it really is. There's no other way to describe it. This thing goes on for like f fucking 10 minutes, man. Like it is long and just draining, and it's meant to be. And then Lee, of course, cuts to the, the famous Donald Trump quote, uh, you know, there's bad people on both sides. I think there's blame on both sides, and I have no doubt about it, and you don't have any doubt about it either. And, only and, the Nazis. And, and if you reported it accurately. What David Duke wanted ultimately happened. He wanted a person like him, or a, or a racist prick like him in, the Oval Office. Now, I'm sure he would have much rather been in there himself, but I think you will be very happy with what's happened. And of course, Lee even includes a little excerpt of David Duke saying that Donald Trump is the first stage of, of taking America back. And it is, yeah, it's, it's really something. It's something to see. But Lee does this to attack you. You know, the fact that you have an emotional response to this proves his point. He attacked you and you responded. And that is what I think a film like this, more films like this, need to do. They need to attack you. They need to make you uncomfortable because change is not going to come from just, you know, a happy ending. Change comes from telling the audience that, look, this shit is still real. You know, I firmly believe... Black Klansman is one of the greatest films of the 21st century. I will fucking stand by that. It is a beautiful movie that deserves to be seen on the big screen more than once. You know, it warrants your appreciation and acceptance and it warrants, you know, your money. That's what I'm trying to say. Go see it. You know, Lee's, Lee's ferociousness. That's the only way I can describe him in this 
directing this film. He is ferocious, and the the way he attacks the audience and the way he forces you to to piece together these the past and the present and see that wow, it's really not that different, is it? So if you need to see a film this weekend, I certainly recommend Black Klansman. Go see Black Klansman. And that is about it from me. I'm pretty much done. <laughs> I'll see you guys when I see you. Bye.